the definition of animation is to give life to. You know, and to me, one of the, the definitions of character animation is that, that an object moving around has got, his actions have got to appear as though they're driven by its own thought process. So our system is designed for an animator, traditionally trained animator, to interact with a computer in a way that was easy, convenient, had all the, the hooks and bells and whistles that they were used to with hand-drawn animation or puppet animation. You can learn the computer fairly simply. And, you know, there's a lot of funniness and buttons all over the place, but it's actually fairly simple. You know, this is pretty much the same as, as a bouncing ball. So now I've got my keyframes here, one on the ground, one in the air, one on the ground again. And as I flip through the drawings, you can see that's basically the movement it gives you up and down, which is pretty boring. So I can tweak the uh, in-betweens using this, which is a spline editor. And these are my keyframes here on the ground, in the air, and on the ground. And I can pull this so that as it hops up in the, in the air, it will hug that top keyframe and then come back down again. So now as I flip through it, you can kind of see that it's, it's favoring the top extreme. And then if I wanted it to now travel across the room as it hops, I can place extremes here you create a movement across the room. So you just keep layering stuff. So by the, by the end, I'll just have numbers all across the screen. But I'm not really looking at the numbers. I'm looking at what they do to this image up top. And with a character like uh, Woody, uh, we always describe it as a marionette. And as the character's built, you attach strings or controls. You basically just key in those extremes. And then depending on how you overlap the keys, you can get a nice flowing movement? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. I'm sure Andy was just a little excited. That's all. Too much cake and ice cream, I suppose. It's just a mistake. So first we have the dialogue, and I look at the dialogue to see where the sound falls and how I can fit this, the uh, visuals to the dialogue. We start with, this is the soundtrack, and that's all we have to go with. So we uh, have... Nothing. Uh, nothing. I'm sure Andy was just a little excited. That's all. And we try to find out what on what frame does each sound fall on so we can fit the visuals to the sound. Based on the sound, I figure out what I want him to do. I do thumbnails indicating his acting. And that way I know exactly what I'm going for in the computer before I start. So I try to really think about what is the dialogue saying? You know, where has he come from and where is he going in this scene? So that's all done in the planning of the thumbnails. So this is Woody, this is his stand-in which means that it's just made out of basic geometric shapes like cylinders and spheres. And it goes faster, that's why we use it at this point, to figure out the motion. To move Woody, I just move the controls. This is his elbow. I can move his elbow up or down. The next one down is the wrist. I can move his wrist however I want him to look. And so on down, here's his, his first finger. I don't know if you can see that. The nice thing about working with the stand-in model is that it's actually a benefit to you as an actor. I think if you can actually make it work and read and communicate without any facial expressions, without the use of, of uh, you know, your, your face, then you've done a really successful job. There's actually another camera that looks directly at his face so that when I'm done with his body, this camera will stay locked to his nose. So no matter where he turns up, down, sideways, the camera stays right here, and then I can work just on the facial animation. So now if I want him to smile, I can just grab one of his smile controls, and turn that up. Ta-da! Let me have him smile on the other side as well. It's so precise. You have an incredible amount of control in acting. Like, we've done some scenes where Buzz is thinking to himself, and he's just got these little eye darts around that I don't think you could ever draw. It's just so precise. That you, it's stuff that you do, everybody does, as, as you're just looking around the room, but it's something you can actually recreate with the computer.